All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning. We're only one day away from the presentation of the budget of the new BJP government. For everything you need to know before the event, do check out the website bloombergquint.com. For everything you need to know today, listen in. I'm Alex Matthew and this is the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint. Today is the 4th of July. In a bid to support farm income, the Indian government yesterday increased the minimum support prices for all Cardiff crops for the current financial year, even as sowing remains sluggish on account of the late onset of the monsoons. Now, it's a long list of crops, but the price of rice has been raised by 65 rupees per quintal and that of a medium cotton is now higher by 105 rupees a quintal. For long cotton, the prices are now higher by 100 rupees a quintal. The full list of changes is available on the website. India has moved a step closer to inviting bids for the purchase of 114 fighter jets, currently the world's largest deal being negotiated as the Modi government seeks to boost the capability of the country's armed forces. The deal, which is valued at more than $15 billion, has attracted initial offers from global defence majors including Boeing, Lockheed Martin and Sweden's Saab. At least 85% of the production has to be in India, according to an initial document issued more than a year back. All is not well in the fast-moving consumer goods space in India. Marico and Godrej Consumer Products informed the exchanges yesterday that demand for their products has remained sluggish in the quarter ended June. That's an extension of a trend from last month, when volumes of India's four largest consumer goods makers grew at the slowest pace in seven quarters. Mindtree has said that Larsen & Tubro has acquired control of the company with a 60.06% stake and has been categorized as a promoter. In international news, US and Chinese officials will talk by phone in the coming weeks as they seek to resolve a growing trade war between the two countries, according to Larry Kudlow, President Donald Trump's chief economic advisor. Meanwhile, Trump has accused China and Europe of playing a big currency manipulation game in a tweet and he also said that the US should match their efforts or, in his words, continue being dummies who sit back and politely watch as other countries continue to play their games. He didn't suggest specific policy measures, though. China has accused the British government of utter interference in the affairs of Hong Kong after protests in the former British colony and issued a strongly worded reminder that the territory is not what it used to be before it was handed over to Chinese control. Its foreign ministry this week said the Sino-British One Country Two Systems Agreement no longer had any practical significance. American airliner Boeing is offering $100 million to support the families of victims and others affected by two crashes of its 737 MAX jetliner, which killed 346 people and have led to scores of lawsuits. The money will go toward education, hardship and living expenses for impacted families, community programs and economic development in impacted communities, according to a Boeing statement released yesterday. In international markets, major U.S. indices rose to all-time highs in thin trading ahead of the Independence Day holiday there, and the rally in global bonds extended as investors weighed the prospect of more dovish appointees to two of the world's major central banks. In Asia this morning, all the three early risers have begun the day positive. With that, it's over to Darshan Mehta for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Darshan. How do we look in India today? Hi, Alex. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. The global queues are doing well and the STX Nifty is indicating a positive outlook. But some stocks that we need to watch out for, Indusind Bank, the counter was active yesterday, closed at the day's high. It will consolidate Bharat Financial with itself as of today. Uniply Industries probably will open up today. Markab made an open offer of 26% of the voting share capital at 82 rupees per share. The offer price is at a premium of 29% from the current market price. 
McLeod Russell ICRA downgrades the credit rating to default for borrowings worth over 1000 crores. The rating continues to remain on issuer not cooperating category and the rationale for rating downgrade was due to the recent delays in meeting the debt obligation. Again, for the third time, Cox & Kings has defaulted on payment of interest on NCDs and this time it's worth 7.2 crores. Already twice the company has defaulted with a cumulative default of over 200 crores. Mindtree Nalanda India Fund, which was one of the largest shareholders, has trimmed the stake from 10.6% to 1.7% in the company. The shares were tendered by Nalanda in the open offer. Steel strip wheels, uh, June total wheels rim sales were down almost 10% for the company, so big set of numbers. Eros International will be in focus. Again, most selling that happened on the counter. Missouri Local Government Employees Fund sold in 0.6% stake in the company. The big IPO that will open today is India Mart India Mesh. The base price was 973 per share and the issue was oversubscribed 36 times on the final day. Arthi Industries will trade ex personal care business today. And finally, in terms of brokerages, Morgan Stanley has downgraded Titan to an equal weight from an overweight. The target price remains 1300. They have downgraded Titan as they feel they are, it's reluctant to push multiples beyond the current level. And Titan remains one of the favorite long term plays, in fact, on urban discretionary consumption growth in India. However, Morgan Stanley is recommending investors to shift to Jubilant Foodworks. Nomura has downgraded Cummins to a reduced from a neutral. The target price has also been cut to 700 from 765. They believe that the margin and pricing headwinds will persist and the current price is building in a 16% decadal EPS CAGR and a 23% ROE which they believe is not sustainable. But there's much more you need to know before trade actually starts. For that log on to our website bloombuckquin.com and click on the all you need to know tab and you will be prepared for morning trade. Thanks Darshan. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthew signing off. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.